Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us once again. Today we'll be discussing Jerry Lee Peña, better known to his Mexican Mafia brothers as Wino. He was born on January the 29th, 1948, in Hayward, California. CDC number was Bravo 19124. Wino was very active both on the streets and behind the walls of the California prisons. But before we begin, a quick word from our sponsor. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. In 1968, Wino was wanted by both the Fremont and Hayward police. Fremont police issued a $5,000 warrant for his arrest because he was suspected in the October 13th, $547 robbery of the Fremont Frontier Motel. Hayward police issued a $15,000 warrant for Wino's arrest because they suspected him of the robberies of the Casablanca Hotel, the Superway Market, and the Quick Stop Market. However, Wino was nowhere to be found. He was eventually arrested in Montebello after he and his crime partner, Valentino Romero, also from Hayward, robbed a grocery store on October the 31st, 1968. Wino would not be sent back north until he was tried for the Montebello robbery. Wino began serving his time in Soledad Central's North facility for armed robbery. Keith Arthur Johnson, age 21, from Wisconsin, was committed to the same facility for a Santa Cruz burglary. Johnson was stabbed in the back, chest, and arms on October the 27th, 1969, at 5.30 p.m. on the main floor of Lassen Hall. Johnson was a brand new arrival at the prison and had only been there six days when he was assaulted. Prison officials reported that Johnson was being pressured for sexual favors and the assault was an escalation of that pressure. Prison authorities identified Wino as a suspect in the stabbing of Johnson and he was subsequently tried and convicted. Wino was sentenced to life in prison and this sentence was to run consecutive to his current sentence for first degree robbery. Although taboo in today's prison subculture, during this time in CDC, the practice of turning out new arrivals was common. Some of the fellas had their own personal chavalo, which literally translates into kid, which was what these punks were called at times. They were also known as punks or queens. The chavalos were considered private property of the gang and were sold or rented out to other convicts for a night or two to generate revenue. In some instances, a chavalo could be personal property or wife of an individual and was expected to be loyal to her old man as long as they were together or married. In the picture you are viewing, there are both Mexican Mafia and Aryan Brotherhood members present. More important to this discussion is the presence of ex-brand member Harpo Harper and his old lady, Jerry Hendershot. To be clear, the prison gangs did not introduce this practice. It predated the formation of the prison gangs and was part of the convict code. So when they entered CDC, they did as the old saying goes, when in Rome, do as the Romans do meaning that when you are in an unfamiliar situation, you should follow the lead of those who know the ropes. It was actually the prison gangs that finally outlawed this practice in the late 1980s. Wino served 10 years in California prisons on his robbery and assault beefs, mostly bouncing between Folsom and San Quentin. Much of that time was spent in California's lockup facilities such as San Quentin's Adjustment Center and Folsom's 4A. Violence was a constant companion, but so too was the dragon. Yes, like many of his fellow carnales, Wino was a hope to die Tecato. On January the 30th, 1977, Wino was placed in the Folsom Prison Segregation Unit on suspicion of possessing a weapon and narcotics. On February 11th, 1977, a letter was received at Folsom Prison threatening to kill the driver and the children of the Folsom Cordova Unified School unless two convicts were let out. Those convicts were named by Warden Paul J. Morris as Jerry Wino Peña and Pancho Aguila. No children were harmed. I doubt the threats were genuine, and it was more likely that the supporters of these men were using the fetty memory of radical groups to scare or bully the prison officials to get some action at freedom. In June of 1979, Wino was paroled from San Quentin back to Alameda County. He resorted to what he knew best to feed his habit, which was armed robbery. By October of 1979, Wino was wanted for the September 25th robbery of the Bank of America in Oakland, the October 5th robbery of the United Bank in San Leandro, the October 9th robbery of the Bank of America in Fremont, 
and the October 12th robbery of the Wells Fargo in Fremont. More than $10,000 was taken in these holdups. He was also suspected in at least seven other bank robberies in Alameda, Contra Costa, Santa Clara, and San Mateo counties. A $200,000 warrant was issued for his arrest. In November of 1979, authorities arrested Wino. Police first received a tip that he was staying at the home of Peter and Sandra Kames. Wino was not found at the home, but during a search, a phone number was found of a hotel. Police traveled to the hotel and showed the hotel clerk a picture of Wino, and the clerk directed him to the hotel room where Wino was arrested peacefully. Police estimated that Wino amassed $70,000 from the robberies. One quick side note, the article identified Peter and Sandra Kames as members of the Mexico Mafia, but I can assure you they were not members but merely friends of Wino. By February of 1980, Wino was convicted of bank robbery and was waiting to be sent to the feds. However, on February the 13th, 1980, he and three other convicted bank robbers escaped from the San Francisco County Jail by sawing through two metal straps on their cell window until they could tear the straps out of the sockets in the wall. Next, they simply kicked the window out and lowered themselves to the ground with a rope made from bed sheets. The escaped convicts came across a civilian getting into his car in the Rockaway section of Pacifica. They forced the civilian to take them to a friend's home in San Francisco. Upon dropping off the men, the civilian called the police, and the men were quickly found and arrested. Wino was not going to let them ship him off to federal prison so easily. On April the 27th, 1980, Wino escaped once again from the county jail along with 12 other men. This was the largest escape on record from the San Francisco County Jail. The escape took place when two deputies were passing out meals and three trustees pulled out homemade knives and forced the deputies into a cell and took their keys. The sheriff said the convicts timed their escape perfectly when the shift change was happening on Sunday morning when there were only five deputies in the whole jail. By May of 1980, Wino was again wanted for a bank robbery. He was suspected of the May 27th $1,800 robbery of the Central Bank in Newark. This was the city's first bank robbery in its history. Wino entered the bank at approximately 12.15 p.m., approached a teller, pulled out a weapon, and demanded money. Witnesses saw Wino enter a brown 1969 Ford LTD by himself. He was described at 5'6 and about 160 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. Wino's luck would not hold out forever. On July the 16th, 1980, following an anonymous tip, he was captured at the home of Michael Aicha Eisen's mother, known to the fellas as Mama Nelly. It was located at 36789 San Pedro Drive in Fremont. Having spent many years in Folsom with Acha, Wino was well aware of Mama Nelly's maternal relationship with many of the MM members. He also knew that she was aware of the gang's operations, therefore she could be trusted. The police formed a perimeter around the residence in preparation to take Wino into custody. He was arrested and charged with robbery, assault, and escape. Wino would not escape again and be sent to the Bureau of Prisons Lompoc facility. But prior to Wino's capture, the police surrounding Mama Nelly's home stopped a car leaving the residence. The occupants were identified as Acha and his girlfriend. Police were not aware of the Mexican Mafia or Acha's membership in the gang, so they released the couple. However, Bill Hankins, now working for CDC's Special Services Unit, definitely knew Acha. He informed federal authorities of both who Acha was and the role his mother played in the Mexican Mafia. Federal authorities refused to arrest Mama Nelly. A search of the home produced a letter from Wino to Acha from the San Francisco County Jail proving that he knew Wino was a fugitive. This was enough for Hankins to get Acha's parole revoked. This careless development infuriated Acha because he had just served nearly 19 years straight in the California Department of Corrections. Wino arrived at Lompoc on October the 10th, 1980 to serve a 33-year sentence for armed robbery and escape but he would only serve a little over a month. Acha had a lot of jugo or juice and was what the fellas called a carnal con la palabra pesada and had been a member since 1961 and been convicted of two murders on behalf of the gang. Possessing these lofty credentials, he used his power to place Wino on the lista. 
word was sent to the brothers in the feds that Wino had to go. On Sunday, November the 23rd, 1980, Wino was sent to Brazil by two longtime seasoned carnales, Paul Huero Tres Portillo from Hazard Grande and Victor Victoria Murillo from La Rana. This sounds like many of the other stories we have shared. Men chasing the dragon, committing robberies to feed their habit, ending up in prison for long stretches, dedicating their lives to a prison organization, only to have it turn on them and take their life. Please take this into consideration, because there's no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow in that life. But for now, good night and God bless.